Hello class, let us talk about the life of the Prophet Muhammad. So in our study of the life of the Prophet Muhammad, we are going to refer to the following timeline. Now, as was stated in our previous lecture, Muhammad was born in 570 CE in the geographic region known as Arabia, and he died in 632 CE. So as is logical, let us begin with a study of the birth of the Prophet Muhammad and an analysis of the historical period in which he was raised. So the Prophet Muhammad was born in 570 CE in the city of Mecca in what is present day Saudi Arabia. And according to Islamic tradition, the Prophet Muhammad was born during what is called Jahaliya or the Age of Ignorance, a time of polytheistic worship and constant tribal warfare. And the Prophet Muhammad belonged to a poor clan of the Quraysh tribe. And the, being aware of the Quraysh is very important in our understanding of the life of the Prophet Muhammad. And the Quraysh were a wealthy and powerful Arabian tribe that controlled Mecca and the Kaaba. Now, what is the Kaaba? So if folks have seen photos or videos of the Hajj or the annual pilgrimage to Mecca, you might be aware of this granite boulder which holds what is called the Black Stone in the city of Mecca, which is called the Kaaba. Now, what many folks are unaware of at this point in their study of Islam is that the Kaaba actually predates Islam. That is, it was a pilgrimage site for the uh, kind of ancient Sumerian, Indo-Aryan, polytheistic religions of the area. And there was a belief that the Kaaba during the time of the life of the Prophet Muhammad probably looks something like this. That is, we have the granite boulder containing the black stone and that it was surrounded by idols or statues of many different gods and goddesses in that particular area. Now, one thing to be emphasized about the birth of the Prophet Muhammad is that Muslims regard the Prophet as a human being, that is, he was a human being who just so happened to be called upon to be a prophet and a messenger. That is, the Prophet Muhammad is not considered to be supernatural. He is not referred to as a deity or the son of God, like let's say Jesus of Nazareth is referred to by Christians. He is a human being. So um, the Prophet Muhammad had a father, had a mother, was born in 570 CE. But despite his kind of purely human birth, uh, there are accounts that when the Prophet Muhammad was born, that he was surrounded by angels. Now, the Prophet Muhammad was orphaned at a very young age. His father died before he was born, and his mother died when he was uh, at the age of five or six. So after the death of his mother, he was cared for by his influential uncle, uh, Abu Talib, and he lived and worked for him until his um, teen years. And according to Islamic tradition, when he was accompanying his uncle on a caravan trip to Syria, he was approached by a Christian monk named Bahira, who predicted that Muhammad would become a great prophet. And the year 595 CE is a major year in the life of the prophet Muhammad because it is in this year at the age of 25 that he marries Khadijah, who is believed to be 10 to 15 years his senior. She is a wealthy merchant. He works for her as a caravan driver. And again, they become married in 595 CE and have multiple children. And it is while he is married to Khadijah that in 611 CE, he receives his first revelation as he is on a religious retreat in the caves of Hira outside of Mecca. And here's an artist's depiction of the um, what is called the night of power or the night of the first revelation when the angel Gabriel um, calls upon the prophet Muhammad to be a prophet. And again, this is referred to as the night of power or the first revelation. And here is an account of the night of power in the Hadith. It is written that suddenly the truth descended upon him while he was in the cave of Hira. The angel came to him and asked him to read. The prophet replied, I do not know how to read, meaning that the prophet was illiterate. The prophet added, the angel caught me forcefully and pressed me so hard that I could not bear it anymore. He then released me and again asked me to read and I replied, I do not know how to read. Thereupon he caught me again and pressed me a second time till I could not bear it anymore. 
He then released me and again asked me to read, but again I replied, I do not know how to read, or what shall I read? Thereupon he caught me for the third time and pressed me, and then released me and said, Read in the name of your Lord who has created all that exists, has created man from a clot. Read, and your Lord is the most generous. And here is a photograph of what is believed to be the cave of Hira. Now, from the time of 611 CE, or the time of the first revelation, to the time of the flight from Mecca, in uh, referred to as the Hijra in 621 CE, this is referred to as the Meccan period. And it is during this time in the city of Mecca that the Prophet Muhammad has a small group of followers. He's kind of like a street corner prophet. And he has this message of, you know, uh, submitting to the will of the one God. He talks about the judgment, um, heaven and hell. Um, he also talks about, you know, smashing the idols of the Kaaba, which does not go over well with the Quraysh tribe. They want to kill him, but they can't because of his, un his influential uncle, Abu Talib. It is also during the Meccan period that the Prophet Muhammad experiences the night journey where he has a vision that he is transported to Jerusalem and that he is taken into heaven where he encounters the prophets of old and he convenes with Allah himself when he reaches the highest level of heaven. Now, in 621 CE, this is what is referred to as the period of the Hijra or the flight. It is also referred to as the year of sorrows. Why? Because it is in 621 CE that his wife Khadija dies, that his influential uncle Abu Talib dies, and then the Quraysh come after him to kill him. So as a result, uh, the Prophet Muhammad and his closest um, disciple, I guess you could say, Abu Bakr, flee Mecca. They spend a year in the wilderness. And then in 622 CE, he is invited by the people of Yithrab, which will later be known as Medina, to become their governor. Now, it is when the prophet is the governor of Yithrab or Medina that we find that the focus of his teachings begin to shift. That is, he still talks about things like submission to the one God, Allah. He still talks about the judgment. But we also find that he starts to tackle some more practical issues, such as, you know, um, prayer and devotional practices uh, and legal issues such as, you know, inheritance, uh, marriage, the treatment of women, uh, etc. Um, so, again, we find that the the issues become more practical in nature because, again, now he's a political leader and he has to address some of the issues within the community. It is also during this time that he has to secure local alliances. So it is at this point in the life of the Prophet Muhammad that he uh, enters into marriage alliances and has multiple wives. And it's also during this time that he has responsibilities as a military general, um, kind of like uh, in defense of the city of Medina. And we do find that he is in constant uh, conflict with the Quraysh tribe. And in 630 CE, the prophet and his armies, as well as his tribal alliances, invade the city of Mecca. The Quraysh tribe uh, recognize that he has a superior force, so therefore they surrender the city without a fight. So again, in 630 CE, um, Mecca falls to the prophet and his uh, allies. And upon entering the city, it is said that uh, Muhammad and his followers uh, smash the idols around the Kaaba. In the last year of his life, uh, the prophet Muhammad um, delivers in Mecca what is referred to as his farewell sermon. And then in 632 CE, he dies at the age of 62.